Hey class, I'm Mr Thornton, and I'm going to help you get that C in your GCSE. This lesson, work done. This topic was suggested by NRG Flash and The Piano Man 1999. If there's a topic you'd like me to cover, then just leave a comment below. Now physicists talk about work done any time you're having to move an object against some sort of force. The best example of this is if you're pushing an object against friction. So imagine you're pushing a large box across the floor and it doesn't move too easily. There's going to be some friction and you're working against a force and the further you've got to push it and the more friction there is, the more energy you've got to put in. And this energy is dissipated in the form of heat where the two surfaces rub together so the base of the box and the floor rub against each other and they'll get warm. And it's also dissipated as sound because it's probably going to make quite a lot of noise as you push that box across the floor. We've got an equation which represents this relationship and that equation is this one. W equals F times D. That is W for work done which is a type of energy and it's measured in joules is equal to force which is measured in newtons, multiplied by the distance which you have to move the object, which of course is measured in meters. So on foundation tier, you won't need to rearrange this equation. All you need to do is put the numbers in and you can get the answer out. So let's look at a very quick example. Imagine that you want to move an object seven meters against a force of three newtons. To find out the work that you have to put in to get it to move, you just multiply these two numbers together. The force, three newtons, multiplied by the distance, seven meters, which gives you work done of 21 joules. Anytime you do this sort of calculation, it doesn't matter what the force is or what the distance is, you just do force multiplied by distance. Anytime work is done, energy is transferred. Often this turns into heat and sound, as with our example of the box being pushed across the floor. This is at its most dramatic when something is entering our atmosphere. For example, asteroids are typically moving at between 10 and 70 kilometers per second. So when they hit our atmosphere, they can be moving incredibly quickly and eventually they're going to start being slowed down by our atmosphere. The same is true for spacecraft in orbit. They won't be moving necessarily quite as quickly, but certainly they'll be moving very fast as they re-enter the atmosphere. They'll be moving at thousands of miles an hour and they need to slow down. We can understand why asteroids can be so incredibly destructive by considering the amount of work that must be done upon them in order to slow them down. Let's take as an example a half kilogram asteroid. So you're talking about a half kilogram chunk of rock and iron, the sort of thing which you could hold in your hand. But it could be hitting our atmosphere at say 50,000 kilometers per second. And that's the thing which causes a problem. If we look at our equation for kinetic energy, we can see that the amount of kinetic energy which this asteroid has got is equal to a half times the mass times the velocity squared. Now a half times the mass, that's 0.5 multiplied by the mass, which is 0.5, which gives you 0.25. That's not an awful lot. But if the velocity is 50,000 kilometers per second, and that's a fairly typical one for asteroids when they hit our atmosphere, then when you square that, of course, you get a very large number. Multiplying this through, you can see that we get an amount of kinetic energy of 625 million joules. If we want to slow this asteroid down, and as it hits our atmosphere, we start referring to it as a meteorite at this point. If we want to slow this meteorite down, we've got to do 625 million joules worth of work upon it in order to slow it down. Now the atmosphere does an awful lot of that and most asteroids will burn up due to the frictional forces of our atmosphere because they're moving so fast the atmosphere places an awful lot of friction upon them. But particularly large asteroids, they might hit the ground and then that energy is going to be transmitted to the ground and the surrounding areas. A particularly large asteroid, such as the one which we believe wiped out the dinosaurs, can of course do a huge amount of damage. More than any nuclear bomb we've ever managed to build. Finally, there's a specific example of work done equals force times distance, which you need to be aware of. And that's to do with gravitational potential energy. If we're lifting an object, the force which we're working against is its weight. And its weight is equal to its mass times the strength of gravity. 
On Earth, that's just under 10 newtons per kilogram. It's actually about 9.81 newtons per kilogram, but if you wanted to make a rough estimate in your head, 10 is close enough. The distance which we have to move it, we refer to, of course, as a height if we're moving vertically. So we can rewrite our equation, work done equals force times distance. We can expand out force to be mass times the gravitational field strength. So we'd write m times g. And the distance we can replace with an h for height. So if we're lifting an object, the work done upon it is mass times the gravitational field strength times the height. Because we refer to this as a gravitational potential energy, we use the symbol EP to represent that gravitational potential energy. Of course, once we've lifted a weight, it has a tendency to drop back down again, and that gravitational potential energy is converted back into kinetic energy. A good example of this is hydroelectric power plants, where all that mass of water has been evaporated by the sun and it's been lifted up into the clouds, it's fallen as rain, and it's got trapped behind the dam. And the dam relies on its stored gravitational potential energy, rushing through turbines to generate electricity. I hope that video really helps you. If you want to check how well you understood, then try the snap quiz. The link is right here, and it'll also be in the description, along with all the other links for this video. If you want to check out my other videos, then click right here. If you want to download the free app I've made to help you with your revision, then you can click right here. If you want to subscribe to my channel, then you can click right here. Don't forget to leave likes, and if you go to the comments, you can give me feedback and let me know which topics you'd like me to cover next. Good luck in your GCSEs everyone, and thanks very much for watching.